So today we're going to go over how you can install and run this Cray AI project that's going to let you switch between multiple large language models. So you'll have the choice of using either the OpenAI models, including GPT-3 and GPT-4. And also you'll have a choice of switching to the Grok models, including the various Llama 3 models, Mixtro, and Google's. And also included with this project, once you run and install, you also get a front end for your Cray AI project. So you have this clean looking, simple interface through Streamlit that will allow you to enter your inputs as well as show your results once it's finished processing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this tutorial does require that you have some tools installed in your computer prior to doing this. So if you've never worked with VS Code or Git or Pipx or Poetry, I'm gonna put a link in the description that shows you step-by-step step how to get these tools running in your computer, whether you're on Mac or on Windows. And once you have that set up, you'll pretty much be able to run any GitHub Cray AI project that you can find online. So to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our GitHub repo. I'm gonna leave the link in the description for this as well. So we're just gonna copy it right here. Then we're gonna do our command git clone. And now we can see here that we have our project. So now let's go ahead and move into that folder. We're gonna do CD and then the name of the folder with the project. So now what we want to do is install our dependencies with our poetry file. So we're just going to do poetry install no root. And don't forget there's two dashes at the beginning here. Once this finishes running, we're going to go ahead and start our poetry shell. This is what's going to create our virtual Python environment. So we're just going to type poetry show. Now, before we run our project, we do need to go ahead and add our API keys. And there's a couple ways that you could do this. The first one is you can go to your app.py file. As you can see here in lines six, seven, and eight, you can need your open AI, your Grok, and Serper API key. So one way you can do this is you could just delete this part and you could just put your API key between quotations like this. You might have done this for other projects before, but if you don't want to have to be copying and pasting anymore, we can also just store it in a .secrets file. So I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. So first we're going to run our app. It's going to tell you that it's missing the API keys and it's going to tell you where in the directory it's looking for these keys. That's where we're going to create the .secrets file. And the command to run is just streamlit run then the file name streamlit app.py so you see the file not found error and it's telling you it's looking for it in any root folder your username and then there's going to be a folder called dot streamlit and it's looking for the file secrets.toml i'm going to go to streamlit and this is going to be a hidden folder if you can't see that on your computer what you have to do is do command shift and period and i'll show you the hidden folders so in here this is where we're going to create our new file. And so let's just do this in VS code and then put it in this directory. Just go to a new file, call it secrets. TML. And here's where you're going to put your API keys. And remember, make sure that the spelling of your label here matches the spelling on the file. Otherwise it won't work. And again, you're going to copy and paste your API key value in here between the double quotations and save it. Once you've entered your API keys, you're going to right click on the file. You're going to click reveal in finder. This is going to show you the file. And then you're just going to place that in the other directory that we were in. Remember, it's the root folder, user, and then the dot streamlit folder. So just drag and drop that there. And once you do this, your create projects that are using streamlit will be able to pick up your API keys without you having to enter them in the project directly. So now that we added our API keys, let's go ahead and try running it one more time. And again, the command is going to be streamlit run and then the streamlit file name streamlit app.py and this is going to start up your application here on your browser and again we could just do any search topic we could do top 10 animes from the 90s and we're getting an api key error so let's go ahead and check on that real quick all right so it's definitely an error on the api key that i typed up and now we can see that it's running here in the background it's going through the project processing the tasks and once it's done we get this nice output on i guess this time we asked about anime and this is just how I have it structured for the last task agent. And the only thing you have to do if you want to change the large language model you're using, you just have to go to your agents.py file here. And lines 20 to 30 is where you're going to see what options you have for the LLMs. And the only part you have to change in the code is you're going to go to line 33 here where I commented change your model here. You're going to delete that part and you're going to put the name of the one that you want to use. So let's say you want to use Llama 3 70 billion. You just have to start typing Llama 3 and here will give you the options. And if you scroll a little bit farther down, you can see that here the model that we're choosing, we're just calling it selected LLM and for each agent that you have in your crew, in this case, we have the expert in the attribute that says LLM. 
we have it equal to selected LLM. And by default, we just have that set up for all of the agents on here. So by default, whatever model you select up here is going to be what all the agents end up using. One more thing I want to mention is that this CreaI project is set up to use multiple CreaI tools, including the web search and web scraping ones, as well as the Serper, which allows you to do Google searches. So one thing to keep in mind is that even though with Grok, you are able to use LLMs for free through their API key, there is a limit to how many requests you can make per minute, as well as how many tokens can be processed per minute. So the way I've been able to successfully prevent my program from crashing when I'm using the Croc API keys is by limiting this attribute right here where it's max iterations. I just set it equal to three. Usually if I set it between three and five, it works out pretty well. But the other thing you need to keep in mind is depending on the task, the agent might end up doing a little bit more web browsing or web scraping and also processing all those tokens or all that text from those results might end up causing your program to crash rather it might cause you to reach that token limit sooner than you would expect. Even if you do end up choosing something like GPT-3 or even GPT-4, I found that I was averaging between 10 and 20 cents using GPT-4 because of this short number of iterations that each agent was performing. And if you use something like GPT-3, it's only going to be a couple of cents. Let me know in the comments how you guys plan on using this project template. And again, if you have any questions about something you're trying to build, I'm going to leave my Calendly link for one-on-one -on -one video calls on the description. And yes, these are free video calls. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.